The IDC predicts that by 2023, 40% of the G2000 companies will reset cloud selection processes to focus on business outcomes rather than IT requirements. Imagine that. Uh, it's never going to happen, guys. It's way too logical. Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is version 9.0. And I originally wanted to do Rocky Linux 9, but the server gods won't let me in. So, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. So there's a lot of firsts in this particular version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is a obviously a major release and there are some major features that are in this. So let's I think we should talk about each one of these in turn. So <clears throat> the first thing is is that Rocky Linux 9.0 was released in May 18th of 2022 of course. So that means it's planned end of life will be somewhere around May 31st, 2026. Not a very long projected lifespan. The other thing is that this particular release has some notable changes for CPU compatibility. Uh, so some, if you're on an older CPU, you'll find that it won't work. <laughs> I found that out. I found that out when I was installing the uh, the ISO on Proxmox, I ran into the same thing that I did with Clear Linux, where the default processor type is too old, and when Red Hat started to boot, it got through to the grub stage, and then the kernel boot was next, and the kernel panicked. So I went back, I stopped it, I went back, and I changed the processor type to Max, just like I did with Clear Linux, excuse me, with Clear Linux, and, and it came up. It started running. So definitely you need to be on a newer CPU for this to operate. So you will need an AMD Intel 64-bit. This is x86-64 version 2. Or an ARM version 8.0-A. Or newer, of course. IBM PowerPC, Little Indian Power 9. Or a 64-bit IBM Z. This will be the Z14 architecture and above. So... If you have those, uh, one of those, you should be able to successfully run this. Red Hat Enterprise Linux comes with a new kernel. This is 5.14-0-70. You can upgrade this from 8.6 to 9. That's not a misprint. That's Leap P or, or Leap. Uh, see the migration guide. There's a lot of caveats in there about what you have to do first in order to set it up and get it going. But yeah, it'll take you from 8.6. Now, I don't think they offer... A supported upgrade path from like 8.5 or 8.4 but like all things if you're going to upgrade do a backup first the other thing on the file systems xfs xfs now supports direct access dax operations and that's that's been in a number of the other kernels for quite some time but that allows byte addressable persistent memory so that should avoid some latency uh, that if you're using traditional block io conventions that should avoid some of that latency and allow the, allow XFS to uh, perform a little bit better. NFS also offers an eager write, which is a mount option, and that also should help reduce latency. Security, uh, SHA-1, uh, the message digest uh, for cryptography has been deprecated. SHA-1 is just no longer secure. And out, uh, OpenSSL version 301 provides an improved HTTPS client support for new protocols, and there's some new formats, and of course some new algorithms as well. OpenSSH version 8.7 P1, that replaces SCP and RCP uh, functions with, internally, this is uh, SFTP, and there's just better file management through the file naming management, I should say. SE Linux has been enhanced to take up less memory, as a, and, and it allows it to run faster, so... Hopefully, some of the uh, latency and lags that we've seen with SE Linux in the past are being solved. Uh, as far as networking is concerned, the multipath TCP daemon, uh, that can be used in place or by Route 2. So if you want to configure multipath endpoints, you can do that now. RPM supports key signing with uh, add DSA keys uh, now. So, And then 
uh, SSH, the root login, finally has been disabled by default. Yay. Uh, but the SHA-1 for TLS and SSH, that's the part that's been disabled. The exception is HMAC, uh, and the use of SHA-1 there hasn't yet been a security concern. There is a, a new architecture called the Integrity Measurement Architecture, or IMA. I just love these names. Uh, they collect the file hashes and they'll place them in the kernel. Uh, once there, they can be anchored inside of a TPM. So what would that do for you? Well, that allows me to make sure that the files haven't changed. And if, if I put them inside the TPM, if someone were to try to modify those, uh, there would be a detection automatically that would be triggered. So it makes it a lot more difficult to... Uh, try to spoof the file system into thinking that a change wasn't made when it was. So, yeah, it should help detect evil made attacks, probably, uh, is probably the, the tool chain. Uh, GCC now supports version 11, and that includes all of its supporting applications, debuggers, linkers, blah, 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 all the way down the line there. So with with that, there's a whole list of them. We could, I could put them on here, but then, you know, I'd have to extend the page for a mile. But uh, LLVM tool set is 13, Rust is 1.58, Go tool set is 1.17. So RHEL 9, uh, this is really kind of important for developers. So RHEL 9 has taken the RHEL 8 module packaging and with Red Hat software collections and flat packs and RPMs, and they kind of put it together in, in a way that allows developers to get the access to the tools that they need and want to use or and need to use in order to get a, a, to accomplish the tasks at hand. As far as virtualization is concerned, there's been some changes here too. So uh, QMU has been built with CLang or Clang and that allows H, uh, KVM hypervisor to use more advanced security and debugging features. So yeah, that should help out there. There's also, I mean, if you've been around Proxmox and some of those others, uh, the virtual TPM, the trusted uh, platform module, now you can pass it through or virtualize it so that the, the uh, guest OS thinks that it is attached to a real TPM. Uh, Vert IOFS allows more efficient file transfers and that's now been enabled. C group version 2 is now the default Linux control group. Some of the other things is that Cockpit um, now has improved uh, performance metrics that it's a page that allows you to, to hopefully identify what's going on when you have high CPU, high memory use, excessive disk uh, activity or network activity that's spiking. So it should help you narrow down to what the culprit is. So I'll come back to final thoughts, but first thing I want to do is go take a look at Red Hat. I mean, this, the install is pretty straightforward, except for the fact that you have to register with a subscription manager, of course, with Red Hat. If you're a develop, if you're registered on the developer site, you can use this for free. Okay. Uh, well, let's put it this way: you can use it without support for free. A couple of things before we get started with this. Number one, I have noticed. Uh, with IP tables, when I, whenever I am harding a system, I always put IP tables in. But I've noticed in the latest releases of Ubuntu uh, 2204, some of the patch releases that have come forward have deprecated IP tables and IP6 tables. And then there's some other utilities that have been deprecated off with it too. So it looks like the honeymoon is over on the transition between IP tables and NFT tables. So it looks like, yeah, it's time to move, and I, we can go check that real quick and see. Let's see if it's even out here. Let's see if I get a... I don't... Oh, it hasn't done it yet. They haven't done it yet. So they're still working. Okay, well, that's good to know. But I noticed that Ubuntu is not, so... It could be planned that that might be coming. So, all right. So, as far as a basic GNOME use, it's it's the same. There, there is a store. I don't know if. Let's look at the repos and see if flat packs are enabled or not. 
course, I could always go do this by the command line, but extra packages. Uh, there is a lot. Man, there's a lot. It's a lot of repos. Does not look like flat packs are enabled. So we can we can validate that further. To see if it's even installed. Oh yeah, there it is. Let's see. If I remember right, we need to do a or info or anything. Okay. Uh, how about VLC? Wait a minute. We better search for it because I need the rest of it. No matches. So no, it is not enabled. The, the repo is not set up. So we would have to go do that. It is a minimal install, uh, to be honest. It is very minimal. Uh, let's see. I have not rebooted this. So it's taking 1.2 gig. Now this is, uh, let me get rid of that. See if it drops a little bit. Yeah, it, it dropped a lot. Drop nothing. Oh, if you want to know about enabling the free and non-free, there's an article on the Fedora site because the free and non-free repo that you're going to enable is actually Fedora's. So yeah, there. But you you have to do it. It's a two-step process. You have to enable it through your subscription manager first. And then you can add the repo. So, yeah, and, and then you can add the repo in, and then it will work. I think that was the same as it was on 8. I think, it, yeah, I don't think that's changed. So we got 1,217 packages, RPM packages installed. So I will be doing benchmarks on this, but I won't be doing them tonight. Uh, I've had a lot of things going on today and have not been able to get to them. So anyway, um Let's take a look at some of the other things. It's taking 4.4 gig of disk right here. So I have installed a few packages, but not anything huge. Uh, I haven't put out cockpit or anything like that yet, and I don't think Glances is saying 1.52 gig used right here. Uh, yeah, 514.0-70. Let's do an update, and let's see if we have anything to do here all right let's see what we get uh, this time we'll stop 66 is the hardening index and that is out of a hundred so let's see there's no warnings which is odd because I don't have a firewall and it usually trigger I'm, they may have taken that out Corda, PAM config, password hashing, rounds, maximum, eight. yeah, those, that's always the same. You know, I think what I should do is go grab that script for Ubuntu and update it for Red Hat. <laughs> Although, they have, they have SCAP, so, yeah, I could put SCAP on and we could just do it the, the, the hard way. We could do hardening that way. Um... But, yeah, who knows if I'll end up with a bootable system after. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it on this part. Let's go back and talk about some of the, some final thoughts about this release. Uh, okay, so one of the things that I didn't cover is, is that this is the first time that the link uh, time optimization or LTO is enabled by default. It makes decisions about optimizations that it can do. RHEL 9.0 is the first to use CentOS streams as its upstream baseline. There's a, there's also a pretty heavy interest in multi-architecture support, and that has been true for some time. So you have you have basically four platforms. You have the x86 ARM, you have PowerPC, and you also have uh, IBM Z series. So. Of course, you know, the company that owns Red Hat is probably going to be much more interested in their products. But there is a pretty heavy uh, interest on Fedora's part for RISC-V. 
the other thing is resource optimization. And it's right-sizing RHEL in public cloud so that it matches the load with the performance metrics. The IDC predicts that by 2023, 40% of the G2000 companies will reset cloud selection processes to focus on business outcomes rather than IT requirements. Imagine that. Imagine that they would actually look at business outcomes instead of IT requirements. Uh, it's never going to happen, guys. It's way too logical. No, 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 no. Way too logical. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I'm going to leave it here today. I'm going to get off my craziness in my soapbox and and go back to just talking about. I think this release is is very interesting in what it's doing, and I think that a lot of the things that Red Hat's doing is going to shift into the other into the other uh, participants. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.